Time to edit our episode. Whoa. This is part six. So if you just join us, pause this video and watch the previous episodes, which should appear over there Z. If you're following along with this series, you should have made an outline, have what you're gonna say, have what will be seen, set up your filming space, and film the episode and the shots you want to be inserted into your episode. Now we're gonna stitch the whole thing together. But before we begin, here's a few words of warning. First, there's a lot of cool editing stuff you don't need to know for this type of editing. Yeah, I'll cover that in later episodes, but not right now. We're trying to keep this simple. Second, there's no way I can possibly cover all the video editors out there and keep this under 600 hours long. So I'm just showing Adobe Premiere Pro. But since I'm keeping it all simple, all of the techniques I show can be done in other video editors. Third, I'll assume you copied all your sound and video footage to your computer as mentioned in the previous episode. If you didn't, don't say I didn't warn you. Trust me, there will come a day when you regret that. Fourth, I'm gonna show you how to create this type of episode for my channel. I'll cover editing, color correction, rendering, sound tweaks, and a few other things. But this does not mean it's the best way for you or for a short film or for anything else. This is how I do it for this episode, having very little bit of time. So please spare me the comments on better color correction methods, how the sound could have been better, better render settings. There's no magic sauce here. I'm just presenting very basic steps so you can take it from there and figure out what's best for you. Lastly, this is gonna be a long episode, sorry. I could probably chop this into about three episodes, but I want you to be able to spend the next week editing and rendering, not waiting. And with that out of the way, let's get on with it. Welcome to Editing World. Let's talk about folder structure first. I have a basic filmmaker folder, and inside that I have a branding folder. This is where I keep all the music, sound, effects, bumper, and any other stuff I use over and over in my episodes. Some people call this their assets folder. The next sets of folders are all my episodes. Since this battery grip episode I'm creating is going to be my next episode, 44, I've created a new folder called 44 Battery Grip. Within that folder, I created six folders. Footage, where I keep all my original sound and video footage. Graphics, where I keep any additional still graphics. Render, where I render out my final episode. Script, where I keep my outline and any notes. And sound where I keep any additional sound effects or music that I need that only pertains to this episode. I always create this folder structure as I found it keeps things tidy and I can always go back and find something later if I need to. You may find something else works for you. I already moved all the film and sound footage I copied onto my computer from the last episode I shot into the footage folder. Also note I've renamed these files so I know what they are. This helps when you're editing or if you need to come back later and find something. I usually just copy and paste my Premiere project from my last episode into this folder, rename it, and that saves time. We'll get to the thumbnail file later. Since you probably don't have a last episode, let's do this from scratch so we don't end up with problems. I would open Premiere Pro, create a new project, and save it in the Battery Grip episode folder like this. In Premiere, I select New Project, choose these settings, Make sure I'm saving it to the battery grip folder I just created. Name it something useful and click OK. Next, since my footage is all shot at 1080p on a DSLR at 30 frames per second, I choose the appropriate format. I name my sequence show and click OK. I have my sequence up here, my editing window over here, and my timeline down here. Usually I create a similar structure folder in Premiere Pro, but let's keep this simple. Now I load all the sound and video footage I shot from my footage folder. I grab my bumper, I grab my music track, and I'm all loaded up and ready to start editing. I move the full episode into the timeline and grab the matching sound file and place it below that. Now I match up the sound. Here's why I clap two times. See those spiky jumps in the video's audio track? In the sound file, here's the matching spikes. I align the two and make sure they match up when I'm talking. Now I adjust the video and audio clip ends to match in length. 
Now I unlink the video's audio. I delete it. I move the audio track I'm going to use up. I relink them together. I play it to make sure all is good. And I'm done matching up my tracks. Now I do my sound tweaks before I start cutting. Part of Adobe CS6 includes Audition, which is a sound editing tool. That means the applications are linked together. So I right click on my soundtrack. I pick Edit Clip in Adobe Audition. Here's my Zoom H1 soundtrack in Audition. Because I shoot this episode in the same room, I have the same environment every time. So I created a preset, also known as a rack, that includes all the effects I use over and over. My rack has a multi-band compressor, a parametric equalizer, and a hard limiter. The multi-band compressor has a preset called Broadcast, which I like and gives my voice some nice depth. The parametric equalizer I have is set like this and saved as Zoom H1 preset. You can mess around with this until you get something you like and save your own. I use the hard limiter to set everything at an even level. That way my voice doesn't get too quiet or too loud during the episode. I set the wet. That's how much of these effects I want applied to my soundtrack. I use 90%. I make sure the effects are applied to the whole sound file. Now I click apply. Let's hear how it sounds. You're in the middle of shooting something, you're- Sounds great. Lastly, I find some dead space in my soundtrack where I'm not talking. Notice when I play it, the meters are still jumping around. That's noise. So I select the noise. I pick the noise reduction effect. I capture that as a noise print. I select the entire file and apply the noise reduction. You're in the middle I of check it out something, and it sounds runs good. Power and now, you have to stop everything. now, please note, I am not a professional sound editor and usually leave that up to skilled people who know better than me. I do, however, know that this works for me and my show and it's quick. I could spend days tweaking and messing around with sound on this, but I don't have that kind of time. If you think you can do it better, let me know. I'll send you my soundtrack. I just need it done in two minutes, which is about the time it takes me when I'm not explaining how to do it. Like a video, the trick here is get clean sound up front, make some minor adjustments that you like, and get on with it. And if you have good clean audio to start, there's nothing that says you can't use that without any auditing at all. Anyway, I'm done editing my sound, so I save the file and close edition. Since this is all linked together, the sound in my timeline has been updated with my sound edits. Now let's make some edits in the footage. As a starting point, I always initially scale and position video so I like the framing. This also leaves a little room on the right hand side for text and titles as I need them. Next I find the beginning to my opener. I trim the front to that. Now I find the end of the opener. I cut on that and move it to the beginning of the timeline. Remember I have my opener, then my bumper, then my show, so I leave some space. Now I drag my bumper into the timeline and place it next to the opener. Now I go to the main part of the show. I find the beginning of that. I trim it to right about there. Now I move it against the bumper. Now I find the end of the episode and trim that where I want it. Now my initial cuts are done. I watch it all the way through and make sure I like the cuts and make any adjustments. I don't like that my bumper goes to black and then there's a big pause between that and when I start talking. Here's how I'll adjust that. I move my bumper soundtrack down so I have some room. Since I want to adjust the video but keep the entire audio track, I unlink them like this. Now I find out where the bumper goes to black, leave a little bit of time, trim the video end to there and relink the two up. Now I move the show part to the end of the bumper. By the way, this overlapping of two audio tracks is called an L cut as it looks somewhat like the letter L. Now I play it to see what I've got. You're in the middle of shooting okay, something. Okay, I like that. We'll tweak the sound levels later. Let's do our insert shots. The first one is me shooting and the battery failing. Let's set the rough beginning in and out points. Right there is good for the start. Right there is good for the end. Now I drag it into the timeline. 
Notice you can't hear me saying son of a biatch. I purposefully use the camera sound across the room on the camera to show you why if that happens, this isn't a loss as we're placing this clip on top of an existing soundtrack. Let's turn off the voice audio and adjust this clip's volume. I move this clip's sound to the max in Premiere at 6.0. I think I need more, so I add a volume effect and set that at 6.0. Maybe one more. That will work. Now let's edit the beginning and end just right and get it where we want it. Works for me. Now I set the scale and position so it's framed the way I like it. Good. Now let's do the next insert shot where I say, that sucks. Instead of overlaying the shot like I did on the last one, I'm going to insert the humor shot in the middle of this video as I think it will be more fun. Again, let's set our rough in and out points and drag that to the timeline. Now I find where I say that sucks and make a cut right about there. I drag the humor shot into the timeline and move the other footage out of the way. Now we adjust everything the way we want it so it flows correctly and watch it a few times. I think it's too long, so I'll adjust it a bit more. That looks good. I like the framing the way it is, so I want to adjust the scale and position. Now I'll put the insert shot where I show how to put the battery grip on the camera. First I place a marker where I start talking about putting the battery grip on the camera. Then I place a marker at the end of me talking about it. This time, I will drag the clip to the timeline so you can see another method of editing than setting the in and out points first. I don't need the sound on this, so I'll unlink the video and sound and delete the soundtrack. Now I'll find the starting point I want and trim it to there. Now I move the start of my clip to the first mark on my timeline. Notice the shot is way longer than the marks, which is where I'm talking about this. So I'll adjust the speed of the clip to fit. In Premiere, I use the Rate Stretch tool. If you use another video editor, just adjust the clip speed until it fits. Let's see what we've got. That looks good. Now I'll just scale the video a bit as I don't like the carpet showing on the left of the shot. Looks good. And yes, I purposely shot this too dark so we can see how to adjust that later. And here's a point I wanted to make. Since I filmed the entire episode all the way through, if I don't like an insert shot, I can just reshoot it. Moving on, my next shot is showing the double A tray being mounted. I just do the same thing I did in the previous shot, placing it and adjusting its speed. Let's see how that looks. Good. Now I need to insert the Amazon B&H photo and manufacturer webpage shot. I set markers at the beginning and end of where I talk about these. Then I go to these sites. I find a sample of what I want to show. I grab a screenshot of each and save them into the graphics folder for this project. Then I drag them into my Premiere project. I place them on the timeline where I want them. I adjust their lengths. Now I adjust the scale and positions. Looks good. Finally, just for fun, I'm going to add my usual outtakes or funny bits at the end. I decided to place a shot where I was putting the grip together and my cat walked into the shot. I'll adjust the in and out points. As before, I adjust the sound to where I like it. I check to make sure it's about 4 seconds after the end. Okay, looks good. Now I got all my shots in, so the next thing I do is watch and rewatch this over and over making corrections until I feel like it flows well all the way through. For example, I want the bumper sound to fade out earlier, so I correct that. Like, I could go on and on with certain tweaks and things, but let's just stop here on the editing. Now we need to get our music in this thing. I grab my music track and drop it in the timeline under everything else. My intro music usually starts in the middle of the bumper, and the beginning cymbal hit of the music starts right before I start speaking, at which point I turn the music down. I find where I want the hit to start and position the music there. Now I set a keyframe on my sound. I move forward a bit to when I start speaking and drop the sound to about minus 18. That works for my soundtrack. 
Let's see how this sounds. Looks fine by me. You're in the middle of shooting something, your battery runs out of- Now comes the hard part. I have to figure out the ending, which is way longer than the track. So I cut the music somewhere in the middle to give myself some room. I like my music ending to finish a bit after I end the episode. So I'll position it there. That works great. I bring the volume back up after I'm done talking so it sounds right. Now comes the hard part. You want to piece the two music pieces together. Sometimes you get lucky and drag the video together and they match. Sometimes you have to play with it. Looks like I'll have to play with it. That will work. Editing the music can be easier if you cut it at certain points in your video, like when you're making a point or doing something humorous. Then you don't have to try and match things so much. Okay, this isn't a music editing episode, but you get the idea. Just play around with it until the cuts work. And this is why we wait until last to do the music. If you had put the music in first and cut it all up, then change the video pacing, you'd be in for a world of hurt called music re 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 editing. Oh man, this is getting really long. Let's rip through my color correction steps. I add an adjustment layer and drag it above all my footage I'm going to correct. The idea is any effects I add to the adjustment layer will affect all video layers below. Yeah, I know, you're later gonna ask, why am I also color correcting additional shots and why I allow the color correction to be applied to the web page and the graphics? Well, because it ends up looking fine. Yours may not. Anyway, for color correction, you can use the levels effect or whatever effect you wish to. For this simple episode, I am using the fast color corrector. I find it and I add it to the adjustment layer. I'll scroll down to the input level control to keep this simple. You move the left slider over a bit until your blacks look black. If you want, you can play with the right side, the whites, or the middle one. Go ahead and see what happens. If you want to mess around with the colors, you can play with this big color wheel. Let's turn the effect on and off and see what we've got. I'm okay with that. There are a ton of tutorials on how to do color correction and a pile of different editors. This is not one of those tutorials. All I am showing you is that you can color correct your footage. The main thing you want to do is make sure your blacks look black, your whites look white, and the middle colors look the way you want them to. I'm fine with this, so let's collapse it. The next effect I'm going to add is the unsharp mask, and remember, I'm adding it to the adjustment layer. Use whatever you want to sharpen your footage up so it's nice and crisp. You can really overdo this if you're not careful, so be careful about these minor tweaks. I use an amount of 120 and set the radius to 1.2. It just works for me in this case. Now I turn this on and off and I see what I've got. That looks fine. I could stop right here, but one time I accidentally added magic bullet misfire vignette to my footage. My first reaction was, what the hell just happened? Then I looked and went, hey, that's kind of cool. You may not like it. I do. So I locate the misfire vignette, drop it on my adjustment layer, and check it out. Like I said, it's a matter of taste, but I like it. It does some cool things to the colors and adds a nice vignette. The last thing I need to do is fix the shots that I purposefully shot that are too dark. Those are the battery grip assembly, the AA battery tray, and the outtake with the cat. I could just reshoot these, but I want to show you how to fix something like this. I'm going the poor man's route, and I'm gonna add the brightness and contrast effect. Setting the brightness to about 50 and the contrast to 25 should work. And it does. So I copy and paste this effect to the other shots and check them out. Looks good. That should do it on my simple color corrections. Just like sound, you can spend days messing around with a color correction using better tools than what I've shown, but again, I have very little time, and for an episode like this, it just needs to be enough so it looks decent. If I were doing a short film, it would be a whole different story, no pun intended. 
I want to do one last thing, and that's show text being added to a video. I'll re-emphasize that a battery grip gives you some more time. So I find where I'm going to add that. Right there. I think I'll mark that. Now I create some text that says that's twice as much shooting time. Now I drag that to my timeline mark. Now I figure out how long it will stay on the screen. That works. And right now we need to stop. I was going to cover render settings in this episode, but that would have been another 10 minutes on the longest episode I've ever made. But I wanted to make sure you had all the concepts you need to start editing your video for completion. Fortunately, as far as rendering goes, I got you covered. I found a BAMO Basics tutorial recently posted called How to Export a Video for YouTube, which includes Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro. I've included the link below. For other types of editors, you should be able to figure out the settings from that tutorial. And that brings us to our next episode, which is telling you again about the BAMO Basics tutorial so I don't have to go through the pain of covering render settings all over again, and how to upload your episode to YouTube, getting all the settings correct, adding annotations, monetizing your video, getting the word out so people actually watch what you made, adding links to other sites, and a whole lot more, and hopefully wrapping up this series. So you've got a week to edit and render your episode. If you need help, Leave a comment below or send an email to thebasicfilmmaker at gmail.com and I'll see what I can do. I hope this helps and thanks for watching. By the way, you may have noticed I got all this crap up on my walls. So I said, hey, let's change it up a bit. So I put all this stuff on my walls and I checked it out and then someone came along and said, that looks kind of weird. And I said, well, but you're just comparing it to the last time. Maybe you should look at it as if you didn't compare it to the last time as if it's new. And they looked at it and said, hey, that's kind of weird. And I said, okay, but did you do that? And they said, well, not really. And I said, okay, well, you need to do that. And they looked at it and said, hey, that's kind of weird. I said, okay, look, I just did this so I can put all my crap on the wall.